Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to practice integrating factor problems. We are going to arrive absolute solution at 9th. Let's begin. On question number 1, we were given xy cubed dx plus x squared y squared plus 1 dy equals to 0. And first we are starting by labeling some function m and n. So here dx and dy will help us to define which one is m and which one is n. So this part of the differential equation is our m and this part of the differential equation is our n. Now we're going to do second step. Our second step is to take the partial derivative of m with respect to y and partial derivative of n with respect to x. So we can compare m and n whether it is exact or not. And my by definition is the partial derivative of m with respect to y and nx is the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So we can take the partial derivatives now. So our my will be 3xy squared. Here x is the constant, y is the variable we are differentiating. And our n, we are going to differentiate x. So 2x, y squared is the constant here. And derivative of 1 is 0 because it's a constant. Now we can see that my is not equal to nx. So at step 2, we can tell that it is not exact. So we can go to step 3. On step 3, we are going to define some integrating factor. And we are going to use this formula. Whether my minus nx over n or my minus nx over m. If we use n as our denominator, then our integrating factor will be given by e to the integral of f of x dx. If we use m as our denominator, then our integrating factor will be e to the negative integral of f y of dy. So we found m y as 3 x y squared. And we found an x as 2 x y squared. And 3 x y squared minus x y squared is just x y squared. Now we're going to decide whether this is m or n. So we're going to go back and check which one would be better to simplify the function and obtain one single variable here. So we're going to pick up m because xy cubed can be simplified. So we pick up m here. And m was xy cubed in our original problem xy squared divided by xy cubed is 1 over y. Because we picked m, we're going to go to this path. So our integrating factor will be given by e to the negative integral of 1 over y dy. We know that an antiderivative of 1 over y is ln of y, and e to the negative ln of y is equal to 1 over y. Here we use the rules of logarithm. So e to the ln of x equals to x by the logarithm by the logarithmic rules. So whatever is the argument inside of ln comes out. So here our argument is e to the ln of y to the negative one. We can bring the power on y and y to the negative 1 is 1 over y. So our integrating factor mu of y here is 1 over y. Now our step 4. Our step 4 is to multiply whole equation, our original problem, with integrating factor we found on step 3. So our integrating factor is 1 over y. And our original equation is xy cubed dx 
plus x squared y squared plus 1 dy equals to 0. Here we're going to distribute integrating factor into our equation. 1 over y times xy cubed is xy squared and we have the heck and we have the x here. 1 over y times x squared y squared is x squared y plus 1 over y dy equals to 0. Now our step 5. Step 5 is to define new m and new x. So this is our new m and this is our new n. Now our differential equation is exact because my is equal to nx now. Next is step 6. On step 6, we're going to define some function phi of y, and that is going to be equal to our c constant, which is by definition integral of mxy dx plus some function of g of y, or alternatively nxy dy integration plus h of y. I have detailed video about this on my ordinary differential equations video. So we're going to pick up either m or n. So you're going to pick up whichever is easier to integrate. Let's pick up m because it's easier to integrate now. So our phi of y, our phi of xy will be equal to our c. That's going to be equal to integral of m, which is xy squared dx, plus some constant function of g of y. Here we are integrating with respect to x, so it's going to be x squared y squared over 2, and we have g of y here. Next, we are going to use the definition of exact differential equations and take the partial derivative of that phi function and set it equal to m or n. Since we used m, we are going to set it equal to n. So we are going to take the partial derivative of this with respect to y. So with respect to y, it's going to be 2x squared y over 2 plus g prime of y because derivative of g of y is g prime of y and that is equal to n, our new n, which is going to be x squared y plus 1 over y. Now our next step is to solve for g of y. Before that we are going to simplify this equation. So x squared y cancels x squared y on both sides. So we have g prime of y is equal to 1 over y. Now we are going to take integral of both sides so we can find g of y. Integral cancels the derivative, so g of y is equal to integral of 1 over y. Integral of 1 over y is ln of y plus c. So now we know that g of y is ln of y. So we are going to plug ln of y as our g of y into step 5. On step 5, we found mu m and mu n which is x squared y dx plus g of y, which is plus ln of y. This was our phi function that we found here. Phi function of xy equals to c, and that is x squared y squared over 2 plus g of y. So in this function, we plug g of y back. So x squared y squared over 2 plus ln of y. So that is our c. So this is our implicit solution. If you would like to solve explicit solution, then you need to solve for y in this equation. Now let's solve question number 2 using 9 steps. We were given x squared. We were given 
we were given xy squared minus y cubed plus 1 minus xy squared y prime equals to 0. Our first step is to convert y prime into dy dx because we know that y prime is dy over dx. And if we multiply whole equation by dx after we converted y prime into dy dx, then we obtain xy squared minus y cubed dx plus 1 minus xy squared dy equals to 0. So here our step 1 is to convert y prime into dy dx and multiply whole equation by dx. Now we can start step 1. Our step 1 is to label m and n. This is our m, this is our n. Now we're going to take the partial derivatives of m and n to prove whether they are exact or not. So partial derivative of m with respect to y. So 2y, 2xy minus 3y squared is my and an x is with respect to x so negative y squared because y squared is here constant. Now we see that my is not equal to an x so this is not exact differential equation. If not then we have to find an integrating factor. We can find integrating factor by using either formula on step 3. my minus nx over n or my minus nx over m. So we will decide which one is easier. But we are sure that our numerator is my minus nx. So let's go ahead first find the numerator. So 2xy minus 3y squared minus minus y squared will be equal to 2xy minus 2y squared. Here we need to cancel out one of the variables and find the solution in terms of one variable. So using m will be a good idea. So xy squared minus y cubed. If you factor out this as y squared times x minus y and we can factor on top 2y times x minus y. So x minus y cancels out. 2y divided by y squared is equal to 2 over y. Because we used m, we're going to find integrating factor by using e to the negative integral of fy of dy. So integrating factor, which is our here mu of y, will be given by e to the negative integral of 2 over y dy. So antiderivative of 2 over y is ln of y, negative 2 ln of y, and e to the negative 2 ln of y. Now we can use the logarithmic rules. So negative 2 comes here as power, so it's going to be e to the ln of y to the negative 2, and we know that e to the ln of anything goes out as x. So e to the ln of x is x, so e to the ln of y to the second is y to the negative 2. So our integrating factor is 1 over y squared. Our next step is to multiply whole equation by the integrating factor. So 1 over y squared times our original function, which is xy cubed dx plus x squared y squared. So our original problem is xy squared minus y cubed dx plus 1 minus xy squared. Now we're going to distribute the integrating factor into the equation. This is equal to 0. 1 over y squared times xy squared is just x and 1 over y squared times negative y cubed is just negative y. So we obtain x minus 1, x minus y from the first term. And 1 over y squared times 1 is 1 over y squared 
minus x equals to 0. We finished step 4. Now we made our differential equation exact. So we obtained nu m and mu m. If you would like to check, you can check the partial derivative of m and partial derivative of n and see if they are equal or not. Now we are going to pick up either m part or n part and integrate and add some function either g of y or h of y. Here I see that integrating m part is easier, so I pick up m part. So we define some function phi, which is going to be our c, and that's going to be the integral of x minus y dx plus some function of g of y. Here we obtain x squared over 2 minus xy plus g of y if we integrate this function. Now we are going to take the partial derivative of this m part and set it equal to n using the definition of exact differential equations. So partial derivative of this with respect to y, the first term is 0 and the second term is negative x plus derivative of g of y is g prime of y. Now we're going to set it equal to nu n, which is 1 over y squared minus x. 1 over y squared minus x. Now we're going to simplify the equation. Negative x cancels negative x on both sides. Now we're going to take the integral of both sides because our aim is to solve for g of y. Now if I integrate g of y, I need to integrate 1 over y squared as well. So g of y will be equal to antiderivative of this will be negative 1 over y. If you would like, you can add as c1 or some constant. Now we're going to plug this g into our phi function we defined here which was x squared over 2 minus xy plus g of y because this was our c. So now we're going to plug in g of y into x squared over 2 minus xy plus our g which is minus 1 over y. So this is our c. If you would like, you can add negative 1 over y plus c1. So this is our implicit solution. If you would like to solve for explicit solution, you need to solve for y in this equation. Let's go to question number 3 and follow 9 steps again. Question number 3. Now we have more experience, so we can follow 9 steps faster. Step 1, we are going to label m part and n part. This is our m part and this is our n part because we are going to convert y prime as dy over dx and multiply whole equation by dx so dx part will be here and dy part will be here. So we are going to take the partial derivative of m with respect to y. So the first term is constant, then the derivative is 0 and the second term will be negative 2x and derivative of 2 is 0 so this is our my. Our nx will be derivative of 6y squared is 0 because there is no x here. Derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x and derivative of 3 is 0. So we see that negative 2x is equal to negative 2x so this is exact differential equations. I just wanted to show that you need to start with showing whether it is exact or not to be able to continue finding integrating factor or not.